for collectors and action figure fans. It's the one and only Optibonimus coming at you with another video review. And on today's episode, thanks to the absolutely incredible support of my patrons, Optibonimus Plus channel members, and even those of you that just hit that thumbs up button, we're going to be taking a look at the new Hot Toys MMS 542 of the 1-6 scale upgraded suit Spider-Man from Spider-Man Far From Home. Now, this version of Spider-Man I was definitely on the fence about, but I want to give a shout out to Justin of Justin's Collection here on YouTube because he recently posted a review of this and it actually made me interested in the figure and ultimately made me pick him up. Now, I'll get into some of the trepidations that I had uh, here in a little bit, but for the package, absolutely gorgeous. Right up front, you can see the Spider-Man Far From Home logo, the Spider-Man upgrade suit all down there, but I love what they did here. They have this really cool image of Spider-Man you can kind of see a little bit of a holographic coloring in terms of the uh, the clear plastic that's on there. And then in case you're not noticing it, that's actually the dome of Mysterio. You can see like his body down there and everything. So I love how that looks. I think they did a tremendous job with that. Then when you come around to the side, you can see that part of that image carries over. You got the Spider-Man logo right there. Come around to the back of the package. You got the various warnings and contact information for Hot Toys. And then it does slide up just like so. And then, like I said, this section here is a, a clear bit that you can kind of see has that rainbow effect, which does give a very cool, and even it's kind of like, I don't know, that's that's really weird looking. I mean, it's kind of smoky there too, and you can kind of see that with my hand. I absolutely love that. The inner package here, you can see the uh, casting crew responsible for making the figure, and then you've got like kind of the holographic grid sort of thing going on there. Really very cool. This side here has a nice Spider-Man logo come around to the front, and this is what you were seeing on the inside. It's Spider-Man with a whole bunch of uh, battle scenes around there, and then I actually like how they did this as well. You can open it up, and you can see you got the uh, accessories, the figure, and everything on the inside there, but you got a continuation of this image here on the inside which i mean didn't really need to do that but uh it looks cool and it adds a little bit something different to this package than just you know the standard slip sleeve i, I just love i love that that's so cool but for the packaging on this guy that's about it so without further ado let's get him out here and see how cool he actually is all right, guys, so here we have the upgraded suit Spider-Man opened up and out of his packaging. And as always, starting off first, he does come with his instruction sheet. It's fairly simplistic, but there are some things that you really want to make sure that you go through so that you have the proper understanding of how to swap things out. I mean, some things are simple, like the head, the eyes, things like that. But when it comes down to the, the web wings... There are several different magnets throughout the body that correspond with different magnets on the actual extended piece. And you want to know where those are so that you can line it up on the actual figure. And then it gets into sim simplistic stuff like what hand to use to hold this phone or the mask. And then you come around the back and it shows how to assemble the stand, how to attach the different uh, web bits, what's not removable. And then, of course, as always, this is a Spider-Man figure. So that being said... There is some kind of caution that needs to be, I guess, observed when doing it. And they even tell you here, oh, wait, maybe it's uh, here. Yeah, right here it says not to leave it in any kind of pose for any length of time as it could damage the suit. So that's always kind of unfortunate because it's Spider-Man and they always use a semi-rubbery sort of material that, yeah, can get stretched out and all that stuff. So just be careful. I never have a problem because all of my figures, I just keep in museum poses. So it's usually pretty good. Uh, but coming down to take a look at his accessories, he actually comes with a lot, which is fairly normal for a Spider-Man figure. Starting off first, as you can see, he does come with a pair of fisted hands that are currently on him. He's got a couple uh, unique hands. Like, for example, this is a left hand that is designed. You can kind of see like it's in a clutch sort of pose. It's really good for holding... Uh, his cell phone he has a left hand that is like peace dude you know whatever peace love all that fun stuff he also has a right hand that has a little tiny hold in there that works really well with like holding his uh, web pieces or maybe even the the glasses it's a uh, very small and as you can see the fingers are really in tight to give a very secure hold for very small pieces so i like that he also comes
comes with a right and left hand that's done like, you know, like, excellent. But no, that's not what these are. These are for his web crawling, which, again, really cool. One thing I really like, and I'll do it on here because it's kind of opened up. Uh, I love the detail that's on here. On the inside here, you can see that the upgraded suit has now taken the web sling thing and put the trigger on the palm, which is great. You can kind of see that uh, right there. And the actual web launcher is part of his uh, lower wrist area. So he triggers that and then it shoots out from there, which is really cool. And uh, it works with some of the other fingers. You, you can see he's got a pair of uh, clinching hands. But again, all of them have a tremendous amount of detail. You can see the trigger on the palm. The actual fingers themselves have a real nice gritty texture to it, which is really well done. You can even see the sculpted in bumps and such. I really like that. And then these hands are his flipping hands i guess you could say so like i said uh, this right here you can kind of see there's a little seam that goes around the uh, edge itself so what you do with this and this is cool uh, i mean if, if you can do it great if not uh, i have a million of these little tools always lying around that it works good for wedging this away so you pull this and it tabs in fairly securely and now you have a section right there. You take this piece and, no, oh, nope, the other one. And you'll put this right there. And then that will line up with the actual web launcher on his wrist. And this is how you now will attach some of these individual web pieces. So, for example, like this one right here. Let's bring this in. It's a smaller one. You got a little uh, hole section. You just fit that through just like that and that's how you would actually get that web slinging sort of effect and like i said this lines up really nicely with those little bits right there so i like how they did that it's a unique way it's new um uh, as opposed to just putting the actual web launcher in there uh they put it in that which i think is a real uh, kind of inventive way of doing that so you have a right and left hand that have that and then you get a right and left web uh, launch thing right there so you do have those in addition to that you do get the uh, extra wrist pegs they're uh, a little bit smaller it's these as the the body for him is a little bit smaller so it stands to reason that these would be uh, smaller pieces as i showed he does come with a whole bunch of different web uh, sort of attachments you got these two that are just uh little blobs of uh, web uh you have a couple longer ones which again works good you have this one here which has a uh, little section right here which you can use with this piece right here you want to feed it through that hole as you get it in push it there and then pull it from the bottom just like that so now you can have him kind of uh, swinging around uh, that's a cool look so again let's just push that through you want to be careful with that just because that's a thin piece you don't want to damage it or anything in that nature. Uh, one of my personal favorites uh, that I'm dropping, well, that's not one of them, uh, is this piece right here, which uh, you can use with the uh, fisted hands. You can hold it through, or maybe even do it like this, I guess, uh, with the holes. Fit that through like that. You can do something like that. So it kind of looks like he's holding a uh, extra bit of webbing which i really think is very nice and then you got this tip right here that if you wanted to you can take the funnel and i guess you could maybe attach that can you attach it to the funnel piece i don't know if you can attach oh maybe you can attach it to the funnel piece uh, oh yeah there's not a bit right there so this little funnel piece can attach oh yeah can attach to like this right here so just feed that in just like that and you can have um, him shooting that and having that attached to a wall or something so uh, all of these uh, web pieces we have gotten these multiple times they're, they're nothing new uh, by any stretch of the imagination they're just fun but they're standard kind of things with uh, any spider-man release that we're going to get uh, not that that's a bad thing at all uh, because they come in handy and they look the part and look great he also does come with his cell phone you could see the uh, hand for that, I'm going to try and find it. There we go. You got the hand right here. That holds that very nicely. Great detail on here. My eyes are absolutely terrible. I'll probably be able to see this in post-production. But you can see that there's actually some uh, writing on there. And I like on the bottom, it even has a crack 
in the, the phone. That's really cool. I, I like to see that. But come around to the back, you can see sculpted in there is a, a little camera at the top. So good detail on this. And, you know, I mean, he's a kid. He's going to have a phone. He also does come with a variety of different eyes. Now, uh, with these, all you have to do coming up here, let's uh, zoom on up. There we go. Bring him into it. You want to push from uh, the outside. And I think that's from the, where you do it. I always have to be careful because I busted mine on the uh, iron spider suit. So this is hard to get out. But you, you want to push from the side and then you can pull the eye out. Yeah, because you can see that there's a little bit of a gap right there. So when you push it, that eye piece comes out. And then you can take any number of these eyes and they're magnetic. So it just pops right back in there and that's pretty much identical but you can see that uh, the one I swapped is a little bit wider so you get uh, a little bit wider of some eyes let's bring that in so a little wider there which you know it's fine uh, you have slightly more squinted it's just a, a little slight change but slightly more squinted eyes there you got even more slightly squinted eyes there so you got that and these ones are actually fun these are completely closed eyes in the scene at the end of the movie where peter was really relying on his uh peter tingle he couldn't see anything all the lights went out he, he couldn't see so he literally closed his eyes to sort of focus his peter tingle and i like the fact that they gave some closed eyes for that that's really cool i appreciate that but again it's just magnetic it just Pops right back in there, boom, you're done, which that's great. He also does come with a pair of Edith glasses. These are really nice. The, the problem, though, is Pepper got these, and I actually stepped on them and popped out the lenses. I was able to glue them back in, but there's a little bit of, like, glue residue on it now. So, thanks, Pepper. But these are nice. Now, these... I got a third-party set. I actually bought this for my uh, Tony Stark figure. These are those third-party ones. They're very similar, but you can see they're actually a little bit smaller. Uh, these are fairly big glasses, to be totally honest. And to illustrate that, I actually have a real pair of them. These are Flight, or these are Dita Flight 006s, I believe. Um, fairly expensive glasses. Uh, when I saw them in Infinity War, I had to have them. It, as I said, they are pretty expensive, but the metal is actually titanium, so that's why they're more expensive, and I had to get custom lenses for them to match. But you can see that the overall look... Uh, you, I don't know if you can see that. The overall look is actually pretty close to the way that the real ones look. Uh, I just feel like... The uh, third-party ones are a little bit better, and I'll show you this uh, on the actual figure because these look good on them, but they were pretty oversized on Peter's face. If you remember, they looked really big, and I'll bring in the comparison uh, later on, but um, still really nice. I, I like having these, but I think that the, the third-party ones are better. But to kind of illustrate that, you also do get this Peter Parker portrait, which this is, in my opinion, the best Peter Parker portrait we have ever gotten this is phenomenal this absolutely looks like tom holland from every single angle for a comparison this is the one that i have from my iron spider both of these still look really very good uh it's just he's got a little bit more of a, a chipmunk kind of look which is funny because people joke about him when he uh kind of gets serious he kind of puffs his cheeks out here a little bit and it kind of Makes him look like a bit of a chipmunk. But I think both of these are still really good. If you have this in your collection, I don't think one is going to stand out more than the other. You got a different hairstyle. He did have a little bit longer hair, although the hair here actually looks pretty long as well. Uh, but what do you guys think? Tell me, leave me a comment down in the video description what you think actually looks better. I, I'm obviously keeping both of these uh, as I'm going to keep the Iron Spider as well as more than likely this one in my collection uh, for display. But let's see. So these glasses, these are the ones that come with the figure. And they're good. The Edith glasses, even dead, I'm the hero. That's what Edith stands for because we all know that Tony loved his uh, acronyms. And so, I mean, I think that that looks good. Um, 
but I feel like it, it, it just fits the face almost perfectly. Uh, I, I do think that the bigger ones do a better job. So let me, uh, I'm going to, because the portraits are pretty much the same, I'm going to use this one to kind of illustrate the, uh, the, the bigness of the glasses. So this is how it, it looks. And I honestly think that the bigger ones are a little bit more accurate looking just because Tony was an adult. He was a kid. Uh, I just feel like these look a little bit better. Plus, these are a little bit more blue. I mean, like you can kind of see there's a slight blue tint to these. I mean, you might not even be able to tell it because it's a blue background there. So I don't know. Oh, there's no way to really tell it. Uh, but these definitely look a little bit dark and these are accurate uh, tints for it. So uh, I feel like uh, the third party one again got it right. The, the slight blue tint is a little bit more accurate on this. But I, I, I just, I don't know. I think that these third party ones are better. Th these ones aren't bad, uh, honestly. But just personal preference, I guess. Um, you know, it is what it is. I'm just, I'm taking the glasses off him. They just kind of hook on there. But uh, I think that these could have been a little bit better. But these portraits absolutely amazing now the only difference that really kind of or the thing that kind of bums me out about it is this is the magnetic one and i'll show this with the iron spider so you you kind of can use it with this but kind of not so it's you know again personal preference kind of thing same thing with this uh this doesn't have the magnetic magnetic piece on there so i'll swap these and give you guys that uh, heads up here in a bit uh then he also does come with this now this is one of those little edith droids or drones or whatever you want to call them uh, this is amazing detail i love the way that this looks paint applications are fantastic the sculpt work is really well done on the entire thing it is smaller and i i, I want to say that there were smaller ones and larger ones this one is about the size of his head okay bring the head in there um so uh, they're about the size or this one's about the side of his head but there are some that he literally rode on so that's not what this is uh, so I, I don't, I don't really know, but I like having this. I think it's really cool. I wish I did have a bunch. They did do a, a pack where you could get a bunch of these, but I really like the way that this turned out. A nice silver detail on there. And using the actual display stand, you can see that this piece here is a separate piece. You just kind of attach all of it. And this here has a little, oh, oh, oh shoot. Got a little like, cap thing that just, uh, <laughs> completely detached. So let's put that back on there so doo, 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 doo. it just rotates and it just pops on there so get that back on and then uh you got that little post that this locks into on the bottom so peg that in the underside there and now you can have that uh going around and about to attack spider-man i really like that i think that's cool I think uh, display-wise, that's really neat. I don't know necessarily if I'm going to use that in a, dis in a display, but it still looks good nonetheless. And then you do get these web wings. Now, we saw this before. This takes it a little bit further, uh, but you want to extend these arms out. You can hear the ratchet and everything, and as you extend it, kind of uh, move the actual fabric out so it doesn't get too terribly bunched there. But let's see, that's kind of play with it uh and then this this is a little bit tricky to find the 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 magnets uh you can follow the instructions obviously but oh no it's, it's gonna go like along the side here unless i have this the wrong way maybe oh maybe it goes on oh yeah it goes on that side so this one's gonna go on this side so uh you just kind of match it up with the magnets kind of feel around with it make sure uh you can Take a look at the instructions to help you out, but um, it, it does get a little bit tricky. You kind of want to spread his legs too, just kind of go along with the flow of it. So that's kind of it, but I, like it doesn't always line up perfect. So there we go. That's pretty good. Let's do that on this side. Line that up. Again, uh, pull that leg out there. Line that. Can move that around? Just kind of fiddle around with it till you feel where the uh, the magnet section grabs hold. So there you are with that. And then this piece is going to come up in between. And again, kind of spread that around. Find the magnets for that. That can be a little bit tricky to do. 
Um, or does it go like that? No, I, I guess it doesn't really matter. Uh, oh, there we go. Uh, so you can create this when he uh, launched out of the plane that Happy was kind of piloting. And he first was revealed in this. You can have him do this uh, flying thing, which I love the way that this looks. I think this is really cool. Am I going to display it like, no, I'm, I'm definitely not. But I still think it looks really very, very nice. And I love it as an option. Uh, he does, or these do have some really nice texture on it. If I come in here, well, not texture, but like sculpted in detail. Hopefully you can see that. But you can kind of, eh, you can kind of see it, the webbing throughout there. I mean, I really like the way that that looks. That's sharp. So an again, another really nice sort of display option for him uh, if you really wanted to go that particular route. But, I mean, absolutely wonderful. Like, all the accessories that you get with this guy work so very well um, that I'm really very impressed. I think that they did a, a great job of really giving you a lot of bang for your buck with this particular release. And like I said, initially I was on the fence about picking him up, but... It wasn't for a lack of accessories or anything. The accessory count is out of this world. It mostly was because of the design of the suit by the folks over at Marvel themselves. Now, coming in to take a closer look at the figure, once again, Hot Toys has done an absolute wonderful job of taking the design from the film and recreating it here. Starting off first with the head sculpt, absolutely terrific. Now, it does have that material feel on here and i i don't like that i kind of wish that this was all one sculpted piece of plastic just to kind of make it so it doesn't feel like that material is moving underneath i, I mean i I'm, I'm not a fan of how they did that at all but the look on it is really very accurate otherwise to the film you can kind of see like the uh, the texture in there that goes throughout the entire uh, actual body but like what they did with the sculpted hands here i think they could have done it here in the head so you could have still got that uh, overall look without making me worry about moving it because the biggest thing is when you want to remove his head kind of have to grab hold of it and let me come back a little bit and pull on it and pop that off and i just feel like doing that on this is just i don't know i i'm not a big fan of it and then you're gonna take peter's head. oh that's the wrong head <laughs> take the uh the new peter head pop that on there and uh, again absolutely terrific looking sculpt there I, I do wish they could have figured out a way where like half of his neck could be exposed because in the, the film in the actual design it doesn't go all the way up to like the base of his hairline there i mean it kind of stops midway i don't know how you could really have recreated that here but that's how that new head sculpt looks and then again to kind of illustrate the uh, older head sculpt like i said unfortunately you have that magnet section so you would have to remove this to get that on there uh, now you actually can i mean it comes off fairly easily at least when i use this well, well maybe it doesn't so you'd have to pull this piece out and several times already uh, it was kind of removing so now it doesn't seem to want to do that so um you know it is what it is but great head sculpt still there uh i just like i said I, i'm not a big fan of feeling like that material is constantly moving but you can see throughout the entire body here you got a nice texture on the red section a lot of different sort of elements here this bit here is that rubbery kind of material that i was talking about but then this is almost like that vinyl material but you can kind of see that it does have a different texture to it which does look really good i love the new logo on them one aspect that uh, i'm not a big fan of and it's just the design of the suit I, i'm not a big fan of the black that's on here it doesn't look bad, um, but I am definitely a classic guy that really digs the blue and red look on them. And that was why I was mostly hesitant about picking this suit up. And in hand, I'm a lot happier with it than when I was just looking at pictures. It, in some angles, it almost just looks like a very dark navy blue, just kind of how the light hits it, I, I suppose. But overall, still, I mean... It looks great. I'm just not the biggest fan of the coloring on it. So um, I hope he does go back to that classic look because I tend to keep the most updated version of characters in my uh, actual display. And this one's going to take that spot. But 
Obviously, I mentioned I'm keeping the Onion Spider because that's a unique look as well. I just hope they go back to that original look. I really like the Spider logo right here on the back. It's done in white, and you can kind of see it's got the little white highlights throughout there. The arms here, again, look really very good. As I was talking about, the now incorporated web slinger is right there on them. So, again, what you would do is you would take this piece off. Let me kind of illustrate that. Come back a little bit so you can see that a little bit better you're going to take this hand and you plug that on like that and now you can kind of see that if you keep that lined up uh, you can't really rotate the wrist too much you kind of have to keep it there but you put that right there and it looks like it's kind of coming out of that area um yes and no uh i mean it kind of sticks out a little bit so you can kind of see it. it almost does look like it comes out from there but it does have a separate kind of just hanging out there sort of appearance it's incorporated well and the way that the suit is actually designed they had to do something and i think that they did a real cool sort of thing here with the hand part here removing to facilitate that look but it's just the overall the design of the suit is a little bit weird then you come down to the legs you can see again you got that sort of different texturing throughout there it looks really very good has a real nice kind of weave pattern in there which does look really sharp you look at the knees you got detail like around there and everything uh, coming down to where the boots are great detail with the webs and everything down here in his boots the feet you can see a lot of nice uh, detail on there uh this is another aspect that i don't particularly like i do not like how this goes inside that joint area now that was a problem with the first suit uh, from uh, far from home and a lot of people complained about it. I know that they reissued that. Uh, I don't. I don't remember when, but it, it came without the Peter Parker head sculpt and, and stuff. And I know that was a, a better figure because they actually redid the ankles on him, so you didn't have that uh, ugly creasing in there. Because that that does look ugly. I'm I'm not a real big fan of how that is, and, and there's no real way to fix that. So. Um, just be careful. Uh, just kind of pull that out when you're going to flex the uh, ankles around. So just keep that in mind. Now, for his articulation, the head is on a ball joint. As you can see, rotates very nicely. Has a uh, big dumbbell sort of joint there. So you get a good range of motion there. The neck here also is uh, articulated. So you can uh, kind of hinge that down, make it look left and right, all that kind of stuff. So good articulation there in the neck. The shoulders move in and out. You can hear ratchet joints. You can rotate it around and then again because the suit is so very tight as you rotate it if you want to put him in a pose kind of move the arm up and flex this suit around to kind of mitigate some of that creasing but you're going to get that no matter what so just be aware of that and they do warn you not to leave it in a, uh, a prolonged pose because it could damage it and i definitely think that would be the case you do have the butterfly joint you have the swivel at the upper part of the bicep you have two bends at the elbow but i wouldn't push it too terribly far because again you're stretching this back section then when you bring it back now you have a bit of a crease so kind of just straighten that out heats up and then you can kind of put it back a little bit better but again if you leave it in that pose for a long period of time it will damage it so just be aware the torso here you do have a ball joint down at the waist you do have the uh, upper diaphragm joint can rotate it but again be careful with the suit as you're doing it it does really frustrate me and a lot of people when you're trying to articulate oh, that seems kind of ugly how that is i mean that's that's not all that straight either i mean that is nice and uh smooth this one is where they uh, stitch it and the stitching is a little bit ugly there uh but that's that's one thing that's really frustrating about a spider-man it's a, he's a very acrobatic character and when you're wanting to display him you probably want to put him in a, a semi-cool pose and you really can't with this for any length of time because it's going to damage the suit and at 200 plus dollars it's unfortunate that you have to uh just have him stand there and i mean granted i usually just have him stand there but if i had the space i would probably uh, pull off some cool poses with them the hips do move forward and back they are on ratchet joints but again you can see the creasing that happens and then when you pull it up again that stretches that back section so that when you bring it back now you have that now you just straighten that out kind of warm that up a little bit rubbing this tush and basically goes away but again 
that's only after doing it for a second. Uh, you do have the ratchet joints going in and out. You do have a rotation at the upper part of the thigh. You have two bends here at the knee itself. Then the ankles do move side to side, but you can't rotate them all the way around because this is all one piece of fabric. So you can't really rotate that all the way around, but you can rotate it pretty decently to kind of get a slightly different pose. It is on a ball joint. So you got the uh, ankle tilt and everything. Do have the forward and back. You do have a toe articulation, which is nice to see. But again, I don't like that. So that that is, uh, in, in terms of a design, a, a bit that I'm not a big fan of. I honestly don't know why they went with that when they fixed that in the uh, the tech suit re-release. So uh, it's unfortunate, but still, in general, a really good-looking figure, but absolutely not without its flaws. And a lot of the flaws are just common in Spider-Man figures in general. And because I've been talking about him uh, for another comparison, here he is with my uh, Iron Spider suit. Uh, I don't know if they're the same body, um, they, they might be, honestly, but it's it's kind of hard to tell. But again, you do have the magnetic headpiece here. So this is what I was talking about. You can remove this, and because you got the little gap right there, if you wanted to, you can sit it there. Um, it doesn't attach. You just kind of push it down, and then because of the suit there, there's a little bit of friction that it holds on. And that actually looks really good. So for a display, that actually looks really nice. And I, I keep noticing this. And I think people have talked about this, that the uh, actual color of this seems to fade. Um, I'd have to go back and look to see, but it, it almost does look like it's fading a little bit from the uh, the painted piece right here. So, um, you know, it is what it is, but you can kind of see it like here where this looks a little bit more pink to the red right there. But uh, for, for display, I think that what I'm actually going to do is uh, go with something like that because uh, I just... I think that that does look cool. I, I like that. And then uh, just because he never got to uh, wear this suit around him, but because of Happy, uh, the suit was made by some Iron Man tech. So let's bring in Iron Man. Here is the Mark 50. Uh, I only brought this one out because th th that was the, the one with the glasses. So I think the scale here works really good. Peter is definitely uh, smaller than Tony, not in real life, but character wise, Iron Man is definitely taller than Spider-Man, but this looks good. I'm, I'm really happy with how this is. And again, once again, an absolute wonderful release by Hot Toys. Well, yes, the decision by Marvel to change the classic color blue to black really isn't one of my favorites. The overall design of him is still really very cool and absolutely gives a very classic look to the Spider-Man character. And as I said, Hot Toys has recreated it beautifully. The standard criticisms about a Hot Toys Spider-Man figure definitely applies. The material of the suit is problematic. While, as you can see, I got him in a pretty cool pose, which I'm actually pretty proud of, I absolutely cannot leave him in this pose for any length of time because the suit will stretch out and will eventually warp some of the key areas, which will then just make it look baggy and not form-fitted like it should. And that's definitely disappointing. But that is pretty common with just about every Spider-Man release. For this guy's accessories, he comes with a ton. And I think they are all really very well done. My only minor gripe would probably be the Edith glasses. I think they should be a little bit bigger, but that's, you know, kind of a nitpick sort of thing. I like what they did with the actual hands here, incorporating the little web shooter section. That's really cool. That new portrait is phenomenal. And while the one that I had with the Iron Spider, this guy right here, is still ex extremely accurate and looks good. The new one here just takes it a little bit further. One thing that I don't particularly like in terms of the overall design would absolutely be these ankles. Why they went back to how they were before they reissued that tech suit, I have no idea. Because they already fixed the problem, so why go back? That's a definite downgrade in my opinion. And the only other thing that I really wish was done a little bit differently I don't know how they could have done it, and it's a minor thing. It's just a kind of personal nitpick would be the neck. When you do have that uh, unmasked portrait on them, I wish that the uh, suit only came up about halfway. Again, I don't know how they could do that, but for me, it's not a deal breaker. It's just a minor qualm that I have. But in general, this is a great release, and I would absolutely recommend picking it up. Now, as I said, I got this early from my friend Tim Sent overseas, and you do pay a little bit higher of a price, but you are going to get it probably about two months early. 
And based on that alone, in my opinion, the price that he charges is fairly reasonable. Or if you're a little bit more patient than I am and you want to wait, you can always go online to places like Big Bad Toy Store. And for that, I'll put a link right down in the video description. But beyond that, guys, that's about it. Remember, if you like this video, I'd really appreciate it if you would do one very simple thing for me. And that's just to hit that thumbs up button. If you like seeing reviews like this and Transformer figures a little bit early, doing something as simple as hitting that thumbs up button really does go a long way towards helping me out. And I would really very much appreciate it. Also, I gotta send a huge shout out to all of my patrons and Optobotomous Plus channel members who, through their direct support, now more than ever, help to make reviews like this possible. And if you'd like information on how you can help support my channel by becoming a patron like these guys, feel free to check out my Patreon page at patreon.com slash Optobotomous. Or if you want to keep all of your perks and rewards like custom channel chat and comment emojis, loyalty badges, early access to video reviews, exclusive member live streams, Zoom calls, as well as the occasional giveaways like these guys do, consider becoming a member of Optibotomous Plus. And for that, all you have to do is click on that little join button right down there. And finally, remember that the real trouble with the world is that too many people grow up. Thank you for watching and taking the time to be a kid.